So I too am going to start with a couple of questions. And we're going to come back to this, I think, at the end, just to make sure that I have done my job. So what happens to the heart in congestive heart failure? Um, a, the heart beats slower. B, the heart becomes weaker. C, I'm not sure. And D, ask my doctor. Again, I think all of them could be and are correct. But I'd like to know what you think. OK, so the heart becomes weaker. That's wonderful. And I, too, um, I see the one person, I think that's one person, 3% asked my doctor. That's also a correct answer, too. You should really, that's what we're here for. But yes, the, the heart becomes weaker, and, and we'll uh, cover a little bit more of that. And then, um, what other parts of the body does heart failure affect? Lungs, kidney, both A and B, lung and the kidneys, hair, every part of the body. Oh, OK. Ah, all right. So we have uh, uh, about 40% of the uh, folks said both A and B, and more than half said every part of the body. OK, so why don't we see if we can address some of these things. So okay. can we, do I advance or do you advance? OK. So what is congestive heart failure? Uh, OK. So Dr. Bibaraj covered this a little bit, but heart failure has really become an epidemic, not only in the US, but really worldwide. And when you look at these numbers, it is really, really quite staggering. Uh, worldwide um, uh, prevalence, how many people actually have it, that, that new and, and diagnosed is about 22 million. In the US, about 5 million. And, in, and, and uh, incidents, in other words, how many new cases do we diagnose every year? Worldwide, uh, that's about 2 million new cases per year. And in the US, about 500,000 or half a million new cases per year. And when you really think about really what that number says, you can see how prevalent this condition is. And it afflicts about 10 um, out of every 1,000 people over the age of 65 in the United States. And, and heart failure is a common denominator. No matter what type of uh, heart disease you have, the chances are that it can become a heart failure uh, condition. So what is it? So congestive heart failure, or CHF, happens when the heart does not pump efficiently. And this typically happens when the heart muscle is damaged, weakened, there you go, that's the first answer, or stiffened and or enlarged. And the heart is not able to move as much blood as it should with each heartbeat. And so this results in the blood backing up or congesting into the lungs, abdomen, or your liver. And organs in the body, no matter which part you, you uh, speak of, do not get enough oxygen-rich blood that they need to work well. So in a nutshell, uh, this, is, this is what heart failure is. So this is a little bit of a pictorial to oops, demonstrate um, okay, how the heart moves in your body. So you could see that the red part is the, uh, the main chamber of your heart, the left and the right side of your heart the left and the right, OK? And what, so you get the oxygen-poor blood to the, to the right side of your heart. And you can see that going to your lungs, and it gets rid of the carbon dioxide, oxygen comes in. And then the red blood that is rich in oxygen gets circulated into the left side of your heart, and then it goes to the rest of the body, OK? So that is the main pump, pumping chamber of the heart, the left and the right side. Oh, here it is. So this is the left side of the heart. This is the right side of the heart, OK? So that kind of shows you um, a quick picture of how the heart works. And then uh, let me see if I could do this. Uh, hey, guys, can, can you help me here just to get this to the beginning? OK, or maybe it cannot be done. I don't know. OK, so this is, a, this is a heart that has been uh, damaged by a heart attack. And you can see that this part of the heart, because it did not get enough blood supply due to the blockages, it has uh, uh, undergone some damage. And what you see is this part of the heart just doesn't pump well. 
So that reduces the pumping activity of the heart. So this results in your uh, uh, inability to exercise much because you get short of breath. And you could see that the uh, fluid can build up in the, in the lungs. And you could get um, uh, all the symptoms that we'll go over uh, that comes with heart failure. Now, with treatment, symptoms can improve. But if this does not come to the attention of your physician uh, in a timely way, a real severe damage can ensue. So what causes heart failure? And we've, we've, we've been talking about a few of them, but this is not on all uh, inclusive list, just a few. Um, coronary artery disease, that's when you get the blockages of heart arteries. It can lead to heart attacks, that, like the, like the uh, video we just saw. Untreated high blood pressure. You know, you hear the term that blood pressure is a silent killer. It really is, because it really doesn't bother you. Uh, and, and, and there's no way of knowing it unless you really uh, go and have it checked. Uh, faulty heart valves. Uh, this can be, some people are born with it, some people acquire it. And then again, all of these other conditions, like heart attacks and, and high blood pressure, can lead to faulty heart valves. Hereditary cardiomyopathy. There are certain forms of heart failure that is hereditary, hereditary and it can be passed down from generation to generation. So this is another condition that uh, we see, typically in a younger uh, cohort, that can uh, present with heart failure. Lung disease. Uh, when you develop such conditions as uh, a severe uh, COPD, uh, some people have pulmonary hypertension, that, has, that is a, a high blood pressure in the, in the lungs. It can affect the right side of the heart, that can spill over to the left side of the heart, and hence form heart failure. Diabetes, that's poorly controlled, can also cause heart failure. Infection, uh, and, and this is more common, again, in pediatrics and younger individuals, but it can happen in all age groups. Any kind of viral infection and other things can cause heart failure. Alcoholism, you know, uh, alcohol is directly toxic to the heart, heart uh, muscle. And, and for people with uh, heart failure or heart damage, we really do discourage for using from alcohol. And of course, toxic drugs. And so this is some list a, a, that, um, uh, uh, that can cause um, heart damage and can lead to heart failure. Now, there are two types of heart failure, and this was mentioned brief, uh, briefly by, the, by Dr. Vimaraj. There is what is it called a systolic heart failure. This is when the heart becomes weak and enlarged, and the weakened heart muscle cannot contract. And there's not enough blood that's pumped from the chambers. So the, the uh, problem mainly is the pumping part of, of the, uh, the heart from getting the blood out into your body. Now, there's something also called diastolic heart failure. This is when the heart muscle becomes stiff and it cannot relax. So not enough blood uh, fills the chambers, and those chambers uh, uh, do not fill up, so less blood goes into the lungs and to the rest of the body. So there are two distinct forms of heart failure in that one uh, mainly uh, focusing on the systolic or the contraction portion and the other one in the relaxation portion. But the reality, reality is that these two types often exist together. You know, it's not one or the other very commonly, uh, but you, people have heart failure, they have components of both systolic and both diastolic components that are damaged. So I know that you've had echocardiograms. If you're a patient here, my bet is you've had an echocardiogram probably more than one. Um, so the, this is how we measure the heart function and see where your heart stands in, in the overall spectrum of, of function. Um, it is uh, measured in ejection fraction. And I just put the numbers here. They're not really uh, uh, concrete numbers per se. A normal ejection fraction uh, is about 50% to 65%. Um, a damaged heart dysfunction can be somewhere in the, anywhere from less than that, 40% would be mild. Um, a severe heart dysfunction when you, is when your ejection fraction is 20% or in that range. And so the ejection fraction is the amount of blood that gets pumped out of the heart with each heartbeat. And I just brought some um, pictures here to show you. This is the kind of pictures that we get when we take um, um, an echo of your heart. This is the main pumping chamber here, the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle, the left atrium, right atrium, um, that this is where the blood comes into. This is uh, somebody that has a, a congestive heart failure. You could see how, di how dilated. Um, um, this is the left side of the heart. And this is somebody that um, may have pulmonary hypertension where it predominantly affects the right side of the heart. So you see, I mean, the, the heart damage uh, can come in many different ways in many different areas. 
So when the heart function is abnormal, what happens in the body? In other words, what do you feel? So your lungs may fill up with, uh, with fluid, making you feel short of breath, and your kidneys do not work well. Uh, it may not be able to get rid of the fluid, and less blood goes to the brain that can make you feel really confused and dizzy. Again, one of the few symptoms that, that you may feel. So some of the early symptoms come, that come with heart failure is a sudden weight gain, uh, the more than two to, two to three pounds in a day, shortness of breath, coughing, and, and some swelling in the legs, in the ankles, and a feeling of fullness or bloating in your stomach, and, and just severe fatigue that you really cannot explain, and that does not go away. And being confused, restless, or lightheaded, especially uh, when you're uh, getting up from a chair. Now, it can sometimes also happen when you first get up in the morning. And loss of appetite and or nausea. So not any one of these things happen in a vacuum. They often happen together and in, 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 in a similar setting, in a, in a time frame. And again, uh, the each in its own uh, tells you that because of the heart being weak, some part of your or vital organ is not getting the blood supply. Now, what are some of the, oh, I had pictures. What are some of the urgent symptoms of heart failure? Now, these are some of the more latent and, and, and symptoms of more advanced heart failure. Um, shortness of breath while you're resting. You're just watching TV, and, and you, you, know, you feel that, you know, I really, I really cannot catch my breath. Um, waking up suddenly at night due to difficulty breathing. This is uh, something that is called uh, PND, uh, and, and we actually ask this when we talk to our patients. Do you sometimes feel like you have to sit up? And, and take a deep breath before you can, you can go back, lay, lay back down. And then this is a condition that happens because when you lay down, uh, the fluid kind of layers in your heart and, and it, it detracts or it decreases the amount of oxygen you're getting. So your body wakes you up because you're not getting enough oxygen. So you can sit up, take that deep breath, maybe walk around a few steps so that you can restore the, uh, the, the oxygen level that your body needs to operate. Uh, a need to sit, uh, a sleep sitting up or need for more pillows than usual. You know, uh, people usually sleep with one pillow. Uh, you know, how many of you sleep with two, three, four? There you go. And how many of you sleep in a, in a, in a recliner, in an easy boy? So this is something that happens because that is the only way in that position that you could actually have a chance to sleep and get the oxygen, oxygen that your body needs uh, it, it, during the sleeping hours. Um, a fast, irregular heartbeat, a racing heartbeat that makes you feel dizzy or like you're going to pass out. Again, this happens when, and when perhaps you're trying to do something, uh, carrying that bag of groceries or you know, walk your dog, uh, and when your body just cannot quite adapt or, or keep up with the, the pace that you're demanding. And coughing up pink frothy sputum. You know, this is uh, something that happens in somebody that has had heart failure that comes more in an acute situation. It can come with heart attacks. It can come with any kind of viral situation where you've been sick and, and uh, that leads to heart attack. Where that, that fluid in the lungs, you cough it up because there's so much in there. It's like a wet sponge. And when you cough it up, you just see the frothy pink bubbles. So that is a true emergency. But these are some of the more uh, urgent symptoms that can um, uh, manifest because of heart failure. So what can I do to prevent my heart failure from progressing? One of the things is, it is a chronic pro progressive disease. There is no cure, but boy, we really do have a excellent ways of managing this. The medication that we have now that will be, that will be covered, it's in, it, it can do an incredible job. However, this must be done and where you are the center point where you must take measures to know how to uh, keep your heart healthy. Make good life choices, um, take your medication, be active, um, uh, reduce weight, and quit smoking, avoid excess alcohol, and, and remember that it's really critical to keep your um, um, uh, clinical status as stable as possible. In other words, that many studies have been done that demonstrate that every time you come into the hospital, it leads to directly uh, decrease in the <coughs> overall survival. So the time that when maybe somebody forgot to take their medication and it led to 10 pound of weight gain and they, they, have, they had to come into the hospital and get the fluid off, or the blood pressure was way too high, the heart failure got worse, so, so they needed to come into the hospital. Now, I'm not saying that don't come into the hospital. Please do. We are here to take care of you. But what is uh, really important for you to recognize is that the more you can do to avoid that situation, to keep uh, your 
uh, heart failure stable and well managed at home goes a long way in, in keeping you uh, uh, overall healthy and, and, and also a longer lifespan. And again, uh, take the health of your heart in your hands. And I think that's what we are all here for. And I really thank you for your attention and I'm sure this will uh, be a lot of good discussions. Thank you.